Welcome back to this Let's Play of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2. Last time, Visquis, a classic Bond villain, has trapped us in his unstoppable wall of tunnels and mazes and all that stuff. And since he thinks we're dealt with, he has a before I kill you, Mr. Bond moment with Mira. And he says, you overestimate their chance. I mean, because they, they, they could have at least used the, the line for the movie. But anyway, he's overconfident. Hanhar thinks he's about to get, uh, the Visquis here is about to uh, get splattered. But, you know, hey. And uh, Vis Visquis offers Hanhar a gift, which is Mira, who, um... Well, let's just say Hanhar and Mira have a long history. And more or less, is she was trapped, and now he, she's going to be put in the arena with Hanhar. Anyway, blah blah blah, before I kill you, Mr. Bond. And, you know, they have their little fight. And he's asking Hanhar, our Wookiee friend here, to essentially rip her in half. And he says, oh, I've left her arm. Just, you know, wouldn't want to make it too easy. And honestly, this fight is way too easy. Because if you're prepared for it, That you, does it, uh, Hanhar. I don't want to kill you, but I will if you don't get out of my way. And, you know, whatever. And it tells you about the rocket launcher, which I really don't care about because it's it does terrible damage, and everything has a saving throw as well. So more or less, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give Mira the um, equipment that Atten was using for his little solo fight. And well, not entirely because there's a couple items that he has that she can't use, but. With this uh, Sith War Sword equipped, she should be more than in, in decent shape. Also, fire off a Mandalorian melee shield just so that she uh, has uh, some extra hit points to work with. Since as a, uh, she's all of level six, as uh, with most of your characters who you recruit late, um, they let you actually do all the leveling. And so I'm actually not going to do any of that leveling. And I'm just going to use up Mandalorian melee shields to get through this fight. You can run around and have Hanhar try and, uh, you know, set off mines and stuff, but it's really not uh, as effective as you might think. He has um, fairly good saves, even if he has um, lousy. Uh, he has some. He has quite a few hit points. He's just not that threatening. And I'll probably go through a couple Mandalorian melee shields. If I really cared, I would, you know, dis de equip them when I had used four charges off of one, but I don't. Uh, they're cheap enough that uh, I'm willing to just waste them entirely. And I, more or less, I'm going for basically two attacks followed by a recharge of shield, and that'll essentially keep me more or less healthy. I have to re-equip a new shield, though. And just hope he doesn't get lucky. Like that. Ooh. Now, if you get really concerned, again, you can sort of save your way through this fight. I mean, obviously, you could also just have her gain her levels and not be a chump. And Visquis is like, well, that's not what was supposed to happen. And he says, uh, you know, face my hounds. Great. Good job, Mr. Villain. And, uh, I am gonna leave, leave you here and, uh, leave you to die with my sharks with freaking laser beams attached to their head. Yeah, um... Good luck with that, Visquis, because 
doesn't look like you've had so much luck so far. Now these calf hounds, hmm, I don't know. I may actually use an adrenal alacrity. Adrenal alacrity gives you a temporary dex bonus, which is, I mean, it's you know useful in its own right. But uh, the main perk to uh, adrenal alacrity is that it um, also gives you the same speed bonus as if you'd used force speed. So it's a way for a non-Jedi to be able to sort of kite enemies ahead. And in this case, I'm, I'm going to sort of take advantage of the, the AI's problems with uh, corners to uh, get around them swarming me. Though they're still swarming me just fine. But at least I'm not fighting them six And again, having an effective weapon ready and set really just changes this fight. If you try and go in with just the weapons that are available here, you are going to have to gain the levels, because otherwise you're just not going to win. I cleaned up the various uh, things that were just lying around. The, there are some weapons lying around here that are okay. This Misasi ceremonial armor looks good, but um, Kre uh, Mira, like Atten, has her own sort of special armor. In this case, it's defense bonus 5 and resistance to all physical damage. So, uh, you know, hey, it's hard to beat, with, especially in an area like this where it's all physical damage. This old beast tendered corpse over there has a key card on it. The rest of it is just junk. Um, Hanhard does not show up as a corpse. I wonder why. Anyway, we have these Ubeze bounty hunters. There's really two options here. You can either kill them as Mira, or you can wait until your Jedi comes through uh, this area later to kill them. And frankly, you're probably better off letting the Jedi do it, because as you can see, um, especially for me, since I'm not leveling her, it's just not going that well. So we just do a little bit of sort of Benny Hill fight here, and uh, just to have a nice little chain of enemies tr following us around. Your objective is this emergency tunnel control. And you access the r routes. And, poof, you're done. <laughs> and he says, uh-oh. I'll just send in the hounds. And uh, he's apparently getting pretty desperate. He says he's ready for the Jedi. Yeah, um, and he calls out essentially all of his troops. Great. Good job. He says, I don't care if the Jedi lives or dies anymore. He's just trying to save his tentacles now. What a chump. Alright, now that it's us walking in, these guys are toast. Toast with jam? Toast with butter? I don't know. Anyway, you don't need the uh, breath mask anymore, so I'll switch back to my meditation band. Um, I'm not going to bother using Mandalorian melee shields on my character. Um, back in the bar there, I gained level 15, which includes um, the uh, Master Speed skill, which works like Night Speed, except instead of giving you plus one to hit, uh, plus one attack, it gives you plus two attacks. Anyway, we're just going to run around here. Um, these high security doors, we can't pick them, but we can always just bash them down with a lightsaber. So, again, I might be missing out on maximum possible XP by doing that, but for a console, unless you're playing a Jedi Sentinel, you're not going to have enough skill points to do that. And you are going to have to break into the lockers here, and uh, there's just not much you can do about it. It seems like the items don't break here. Maybe that they sort of expected that you would have to break things in and didn't want to have them have that problem. I don't know. But, uh... Lightsabers are very effective against the inanimate objects. And animate ones for that to matter, but... They're not infinitely effective.
And uh, as always, or I guess it goes without saying, you can't uh, use your companions here. You have, you're just on your own. Um, not that the enemies here are hard enough that you would really need your companions to deal with them, but... Hmm, XR Kun's light paddle suit. What's that? Uh, too bad. I was hoping it was an armor you could wear and use force powers, but not such a, not the case. It is very nice medium armor, but, you know, it's armor. Anyway, we're out of time for this episode. Next time, we'll clean up this area and then go face off with the, uh, the big bad. Um, well, the not quite as big bad. Well, he's a fairly, fairly small bad in the, the grand scheme of things.